Battery it's was all tight. good. That old buck. It's all good. Question was, um, you came out in such a, a, a great era, 93, 94. Tell me what that atmosphere was like going into making that debut album. Oh, uh, man, that, that atmosphere was incredible because back then in the studio, you was able to listen to a lot of different artists, you know, whether it was Nas, Pete Rock, Biggie. All the producers knew each other, and they would always play each other's production in different sessions. So, you know, we were privy to hear certain things from different artists, whether it was Wu-Tang, AZ, Mob D. Everybody heard everybody. And during the climate at that time, we were able to express things that we knew in the five boroughs we were going through, maybe the rest of the world or the globe or the nation was going through, but we knew that New York had a significant pressure that we were experiencing, whether it be through police brutality, you know, crack cocaine, the selling, distribution, whatever it was, we had some stories we had to tell, and I think that that's what made the golden era so golden. Right. You released... Uh... A few monstrous singles off that album, Where's My Homies and I'll Take Care. What was life like? And did those songs take you guys to the next level? Where My Homies definitely took it to the next level because um, even though, you know, Where My Homies is a song that everybody in the hood related to, even till today, man, I get a lot of, a lot of, you know, brothers that come up to me and actually thank me because of the fact that that record helped them make it through a certain point in their life where they, you know, it was all, all odds was against them, you know, whether they was, you know, going through whatever at the home front, the hood with some homies, whether they was locked up in the yard, whether it's New York, Cali, you know, I, I mean, we are tribe. It's a lot of brothers that personally told me if it wasn't for that song, they don't think they would have did it. So I think that where my homies definitely, you know, just musically, elevated hip-hop, but at the same time also allowed Ill Out Scratch to get to that next level. And that next level was that R&B level that crossed between, you know, hip-hop and also R&B to where Brian Knight helped us bridge that gap to become more of a genre where we could be accepted as not just, you know, hardcore boom bat, but it's like, yo, we could, we could do that. It's cool, but we also could do it. It's music. You know, and that's what's I think even today is readily accepted because if you hear R&B today, you know, even years ago, you that they want to be inspired or incorporate hip hop beats into their music, which is, I think, a great fusion. Uh, at this time, was uh, your label Mercury, did they give you their full support or you think they could have done a little more? Well, as an artist, you always, you know, you always think a label could do more, but I think that they did the best job that they could do at the time. So I think that, you know, if we were on a different label, they maybe would have, you know, prolonged things and handled things a little different, a little better. And due to the fact that Mercury Records was a major label, but not necessarily a hip hop label, they may not have been inclined to handle something a certain way, especially when they may have had another agenda when they got something coming behind this rap act to help promote this other act coming. So... Mercury did an excellent job. I, I, I'm happy and I appreciate the opportunity that they provide my man Ill. Uh, but at the same time, I know that for a fact, if we were on another label, you know, I'm not just going to say another label, but I'm, I'm going to say a, a specific hip hop label that is inclined and in tune with the streets and understands the artist and, and dedicates and, you know, uh, dedicates time to that artist and the development of that artist. I think that things could have been a little bit uh, more successful, but I'm not mad at the outcome, and I appreciate the opportunity because it ain't over, baby. Right. Um, looking back at that album, it turned uh, 25 last year, stood the test of time. Is there anything about that album that uh, maybe somebody didn't make the cut or producer you didn't get to work with? Did that album come out exactly how you planned it to? I'm going to tell you honestly, bro, man, that album came out the way it was supposed to come out. I mean, my personal views looking back is going to be different, but I think that what we were going through at that time, that album was what it was supposed to be. You know what I mean? It was what it's supposed to be. Now, if it was a situation to where, 
let's say for example the control was more like how today artists have more control in regards to creative aspect of their product I would have definitely put more songs on there. I would have removed some songs and I would have taken my time and included some other producers on there or, you know, included the same producers on there, but just not have rushed it. You know, I would have worked records a little longer. I would have done some remixes and included some other artists who were hot at the time on the remix. There's just certain things that you could have done in order to enhance the overall progress of the album to be released but when you just release a single and release a single and then put an album out it's like you know you got to build it up it's kind of like foreplay you know you can't just get a chick <laughs> you know what i mean i mean come on bro you ain't right. gonna <laughs> and dine. you gotta you know not that you're trying to run game on because i don't want game but if you're really interested you dedicated to a female you want her to know you serious about what it is Yo, boo, I'm not rushing. I ain't trying. Yo, seriously, let's just chill. Let's go over here. Like, let's go over here. Let's do this. Let's work this. And then eventually, your jaws come down. It all goes around. Baby. Let's <laughs> Film. Right. So the album was uh, highly successful. Why did it take uh, four years to make your sophomore album? What was going on between... 94 to 97 or so well the politics of the business that's what it is it's all business you know when there's business involved and you're trying to work things out and you're trying to renegotiate and you're trying to you know and there's there's uh bad business you know or you know fraud business or things where people trying to hide behind you know, you, you, you get into it and it's like, come on, we know what the truth is. That's why it's like, you know, you're going to get the second album and that's it. Because you know what? The consolidation of the industry, the digi digitizing of the industry, there was a lot of things going on. So, so basically, all these labels are being swallowed and gobbled up by each other. Then you're going to take it off of vinyl and make it CD and go digital and stuff. There's a lot of things that's changed in the industry. So when you in a, uh, what's the word? A, a metamorphosis of, of something that's happening, it's kind of like when you go into something and you're doing it out of the pure love as a child, and this, even though it's business, it's business, we understand it's business, but this is, we got into this to get away from the bull crap on the streets, the hardcore policy business on the streets. We could have went that way and you know, but now, nah. Plus, Big got shot, Pop got shot. It was just so much going on. It was like, you know what? We got into this for fun. It allows Scratch is about having fun. We about making money. We about having a good time. So when we seeing things like this occurring in the industry, which we saw as a escape from our everyday life, now we got to make a U-turn because that's this what we in right now is not even good. Even though we got success in it, the vibration wasn't good. So now I got we got to go this way, you know what I'm saying? Because we got family, we got loved ones. We it's not worth the risk. Now just like we made a U-turn about face, still been making music, still been doing what we love to do as a group unit individually, but just without the politics and all of the BS of the business. Get that out of here. Get with the drama. We're not with the drama. So were you pleased with how the second album came out or was it just an attempt to uh, be done with the, the major labels? That's an excellent question. I'm going to say that's, I'm going to say both. It was a mixed combination because it was to the point where we just wanted to be done with it. That's why the album is called Keep It Moving. You keep it moving and I'm going to keep it moving. Because guess what? I'm a, we going to be good either way too. That's just what it is. And I'm still good today. My man Ill is good. We good. You know what I'm saying? My thing is, a lot of fans were expecting more. And I feel bad we let, you know, maybe some fans down in regards to continuing the music aspect of it. But yeah, we wanted to get off the label. We wanted to get, to get out of that situation. And we wanted to make some music and just, you know, do something to where. Now, it's a lot of good songs on that album. It's just that it wasn't promoted right. This, this will tell you. It wasn't promoted right. This will tell you what's going on with the label and the business. Good music on there, 
You know, we got Christopher Wills, we got Yo-Yo on there, we got Gina Thompson. You know, we got some people on there where it's like, oh, wow, didn't that become a hit record? Oh, why didn't that become something that the world knows? And it's cool because it was like, oh, if I got beef with you, you got beef with me, and we not getting along, shake hands, bro. I ain't trying to kill you. I'm just trying to say you go your way, walk my way. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it was. So that was uh, 97, 23 years have passed, and we're now in 2020. What uh, were you doing uh, up until this point after the second album? Man, up until this point, second album, 97 till now, I've been doing a lot of different things, man. First and foremost, family first. You know, I've been taking care of my family. You know what I mean? I got a situation where I have some kids, my children, you know what I'm saying? Um, we did some, uh, some some work on Wall Street. I was a broker, stock broker legally. And, uh, you know, that's something that I'm proud of. You know, being able to take care of the family and, and do the right thing. That's something that uh, is first and foremost the priority of my life. I was raised with family. But in addition to that, we also have albums and records that we recorded that um, I'm gonna, we're going to be happy to release in the near future, man. You know what I'm saying? It's good stuff. As a group? Yeah. Okay. Um, you were one of the few people who... Uh, have a track with Michael Jackson. Did you guys actually record that or did they just take your vocals and, and put it on the album? Well, that's the situation to, we did record that, but we had an opportunity through a producer who, so, no, we, we wasn't familiar really with Michael, but uh, just to be accepted, we know he had to approve everything to it out of many different artists who we know who submitted some stuff. That's a blessing and an honor to even be uh, considered to be um, an artist to be involved with my track. So where is Al Scratch at today? I see you still making quality music, videos. Um, what do you got coming up in the future? Uh, well, just last night I released, uh, you know, Rollout is on YouTube. Al Scratch, my Al Scratch channel. Everybody can go on there, subscribe, check it out. That's just one song that, you know, while I've been quarantined, like all of us, you know, I'm in the crib right now. I wish I could pan and show you everything, but I'm in the studio right now. And I'm just, you know, since I got nothing else to do, I'm home with family. I've been recording a couple of songs. Let me just put something out real quick. A little EP since, you know, the last two, three weeks I recorded. I'm going to put that out. And then me and Elle, we got a couple of things. I got some stuff with my man, Blase from uh, Blase Blase that I will probably release in the near future. And, you know, just to continue to make music and inspire, you know, people, the young folk. Yo, Boo Boo, can you stop that? My I'm sorry, my daughter's down here, yo. <laughs> All good. You know, and, uh, you know, just continue to make music and, and, and do something to inspire the folk. You know, that's what it's about. Got a few uh, fan questions for you. Um, Triboro, Gigolo wants to ask, um, what led to the split between you and Big L, if, if there even was one? And uh, would you be up for a reunion album? What's his name, Triborough Gigolo? Gigolo, Triborough Gigolo. Triborough Gigolo, what's good, homie? Let me let you know, Ill Al Scratch has never broken up. We still together. That's my brother forever and ever, B. You know what I'm saying? I just spoke to Ill last night. So we definitely, like I just mentioned, we got some music y'all ain't here yet and i'm happy to announce that we're gonna be releasing it soon in addition to some other stuff that we worked on with some other artists creatively i don't want to mention any names but um y'all gonna y'all gonna be thoroughly uh impressed and I, I hope satisfied with the music we release man it's gonna be a beautiful situation Tribo. so trust me we never broke up it's all love all the way to the end that's my homie for life you know what i mean that's my brother so you know, there ain't going to be a reunion because there ain't no need for a reunion. We always been a union. Um, when this uh, virus uh, starts to uh, clear itself a little bit, do you guys plan on doing a 25th anniversary tour for uh, your debut album? 25th anniversary tour would be lovely, man. You know, um, that's something that we're going to consider. Dep depending upon the demand that's out there, We, we, you know, that's something we could do, you know. 
everything is open. Everything is open for uh, opportunities. So if that if people demand it, I'm pretty sure that could happen. I ain't not going to deny, you know? Uh, I got one last question from my man, Daniel son. He's out in uh, Minnesota. And that's what I was asking you earlier on. Um, there was a show uh, back in 95 where uh, Ice Cube and Scarface uh, performed and you guys were the openers, but you guys ended up showing up late and closing the show. Do you remember that show? Oh man, what town was that? Was that Chicago? St. Paul, Minnesota. I can't, I don't remember that, bro. Scott <laughs> showed up late. Oh, man, I don't know if that could have happened, B. We've been excited to be there, man. Not unless it was an airplane delay or something like that or, or, or some type of, you know, bus situation. But Minneapolis, Minnesota, I got to call Ill and ask him about that, man, and I could get back to you. Yeah, it was, uh, uh-oh. Screen, yeah. Hold there, bro. Yeah, I don't know why my battery is dying, man. It's plugged in and everything, but it's all good. Um, at this point, uh, we got about ten minutes left. Uh, can you shout out your uh, social media where everybody can keep up with you at, and uh, let everybody know where to uh, find your your new music at? Oh, definitely, man. First of all, man, I want to thank you for the opportunity having me on the show, man, talking to the people, getting in touch, man, staying involved, man. I just want to make sure that everybody at home staying safe, man, keeping your family and your loved ones at a, a distance to where you're not exposed to anything, man. This is Al Scratch. You can catch me on the official Al Scratch on Facebook. If you go to Instagram, I'm at Al on Instagram. That's spelled A L S K. R A T C H. So that's Al Scratch with a K, y'all. A L S K R A T C H. That's Instagram. That's Twitter. You know, if you go to my YouTube channel, like I said, I just dropped my video last night, Roll Out. That's just one of many that's, that I'm about to drop. Um, but, you know, it's all love. Al Scratch has got new music coming, man. It's new Al Scratch. I have a a whole new vibe, man. And I'm still representing the LF Scratch Brooklyn Uptown to the fullest. And that's how we're doing it, man. Love and respect. Well, I want to thank you for everything. Um, like I said, I've been a fan since day one. So your songs definitely changed my life. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you tonight. Um, I want you to stay safe. Uh, this is The Journalist Sincere, episode number four of the Quarantine Sessions. Tomorrow night we have a and R Dante Ross. <laughs> And uh, I just want everybody to stay safe. And uh, thank you again, Al Scratch. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you, brother. Respect and peace to the family, man. All love, baby. Thank you. We'll keep up in touch. Yes, indeed. All right. Thank you. Thank you, brother.